Hello, my name is Tine. In this video I'll show you my new 80mm lathe chuck, brand Kronos. I got them from Kronos UK, engineering supply store. Here I got my mini lathe with 80mm 3 jaw chuck, but they make lot of hours, so it's a bit worn out. Then I got here 80mm 4 jaw chuck, I also buy from Kronos with the rotary table. But that chuck is so tight and precise that I don't use them often. And also on the rotary table need 3 jaw chuck more times than 4 jaws. Then I got here 100mm 3 jaw self-centering chuck with a flange for mini lathe. And the last one is 100mm 4 jaw independent chuck with a flange for mini lathe. Let's unbox and see that new 80mm Kronos chuck. Package is good as always. Here's an extra kit of soft jaws available for that chuck. Inside of original box got protective insert so everything is on its place. K, kit of auto jaws and M6 screw for mounting. And below is fully assembled chuck. Everything is oiled for rust protection, so first thing I do is complete disassemble and clean each part. While disassembling I got some problems to get snail gear out of chuck, because it's so precise. It looked like I used force to get out, but I punch really gently, evenly all around. When everything is cleaned I disassemble also the older head to see if there's some major difference. But the chucks are almost the same, the only difference I see is that gear running surface on Kronos is a bit smaller, so maybe chip doesn't block it so fast. Second thing is oiler, or nipple as we call them. We supply oil di direct into warm gear and jaws. It's my first chuck with a nipple, but I don't use them, I'll show you later why. It stay a bit out of chuck surface, but with a gentle punch I move them deeper. Worm gear is pretty much the same, it got some chip from cutting teeth, it can be easily sanded with a file, but it's running nice so I leave as is this. Nothing special on tightening gear. One of biggest difference is rear cover, old got plastic one and Kronos got aluminium cover. Every part got in great number, look like they got some quality check behind. Also each jaw got clearly seen number, not only the first one. There come inner and outer jaws with the chuck, but they offer also soft jaws which got hard and told the gear part, so we can cut jaws by our needs, it can be a very useful thing. Let's assemble the chuck now. As I say, I don't like to use oil, because on high RPM centric frugal force throwing could oil all around, so I use some chain loop to loop warm gear and dry loop to loop the jaws. Firstly loop the warm gear, but only on jaw side and inside on running surface. Then spray the jaws, grooves, chuck grooves and tightening gear with a dry loop. After it's dry I wipe the excess. Now insert all three gears and check if running without resistance, then secure it with screws. Then just insert the jaws, screw on the back cover and it's ready to use. Let's mount them on late now, but before try to mount the 100mm chuck. I use the chuck time to time, because it got 26mm hole through the chuck and flange, so many times saved me to turn some larger part bigger than 60mm diameter, such as the hole through the 80mm chuck. But for daily use it's too heavy chuck for that late, need more time to start, much more time to stop and entire late start shaking fast if it isn't perfectly centered, so 80mm chuck is far the best for that small late. And here's the 4 jaw independent chuck, that's pretty specific chuck for turning pieces of irregular shapes or if you want to turn outside of the center. Honestly I used them only a few times, but project can be done without them. On this chuck we got only 4 jaws, because it's same for inner and outer clamping. By the way, if you want to center something on this chuck, we need time and steel nerves. Before I mount the chuck on the lathe I clean the mounting surface. Like the old chuck also that one got a bit bigger races, so it won't hold the perfect center. Like the 4 jaw which hold on its place without screw, so I need to punch off from behind. 
As I say, it's the cheapest possible late, so I got spindle 100 south of center, but the races on chuck is slightly bigger, so I can center them. Centering is fast and easy, but don't forget to fully tighten the screws after the job is done. I mount them inside of 100s, because I'm only a hobbyist it's more than good for me. Front cipher is running almost in perfect zero. Let's try to clamp some piece now and see the most important precise. I got here 6mm granite hardened steel, clamp into chuck and see what the gauge say. Well, 500s, not terrible, but also not that good. Then I try to untie, turn the piece a bit and tie it again. And got even worse result, about 800s that's clearly too much. Then I try to clamp some bigger piece and come to about 300s. What about auto jaws? Well, I got much better result with them, just about 1 or 200s. I wasn't satisfied with inner jaws results, so I make some more measurements and notice some issues. Well, basically it's not an issue, because that's not a precise chuck. If we compare 4 jaw and 3 jaw chuck, we can see that on 4 jaw chuck, got every surface on chuck grow and jaws completely grinded to fine finish. On that three jaw, grooves into chuck is only milled. On the jaws, some surface is milled and some grinded. But all that was made before protective coating, so it's logical it's not so precise. Here we can see how easy jaw slide into three jaw chuck, because it got some clearance. Or into four jaw where we got really tight match. But honestly, I don't imagine use four jaw chuck for daily use, it's just too tight for clamping. And it got only one tightening gear, so we clamp every time on same position. But it's not handy, especially on the rotary table. So it's all okay for 3 jaw chuck, but it bothered me that when clamping piece and it hold only at the beginning of jaws, but not on the end. So every time got clearance between end of jaws and work piece, so I decided to grind at the jaws. But I do that for the first time, completely amateur, so don't trust me about that. We always got some clearance between jaws and snail gear, in my case about 20 hundreds. So, theoretically we need to tighten the jaws into the side we want to grind. If we want to grind inside of the jaws, we need to tie the chuck before grinding. But how if we want to grind the jaws? Well, there comes some special spring, which installed between the jaws, so it pushed them out to position. I don't want to make them, so I just use a piece of wood as a shortcut. If we want to grind the outer side of jaws, we need to untighten the chuck with a load. We can use some metal ring, but I don't got such dimension of ring, so I help with a piece of wire. Next step is to install the grinder, I just use my proxon. When we install some cheap grindstone it will definitely be out of center, so first we need to calibrate the stone. There are many ways to do that, but I just use a piece of video I install into chuck and shape the stone. But when doing that don't forget to protect the rails, otherwise stone dust and grinding steel can get under the rails, and we don't want that. We need to do that every time after take stone out of grinding chuck. The stone is now centered, so I can tie the jaws and grind them, but not too much, just for a hundred or two. Every jaw showing perfect zero now, but when I clamp the piece to entire jaw surface, I have even bigger problem with jaw parallelism, so I got even more clearance on front of the jaw surface. That's because I load the jaws only on front, but the snail gear pushed the jaws from behind, so clearance into chuck grows allow the jaws to tilt a bit. I try a few different ways to grind the jaws, but on the end I get best result with the easiest possible way. I just leave the jaws freely into chuck and set a bit bigger RPM so centrifugal force push the jaws out and then just gently grind. With that process I get super parallelism. With the gently tightening jaw clamp the workpiece by entire surface and the gauge show me 100s out of center. That's best what I can do and I am satisfied with the result. After we're done with grinding, don't forget to clean and grease the chuck again. It's not good to have entire chuck filled with the steel dust. Now I got 5 chucks. 80mm 4 jaw will be for precise work. New chronos will be on the late. 200mm will be for special job. And the old 80mm 3 jaw will be on rotary table plate. But it got only 4 holes, so I need to put the flange on rotary table and drill 3 holes. After that video, you may think that chuck is not enough precise, but as I say, it's a 3 jaw self-centering chuck for everyday use. I really like about the chuck that it's running so nice we can turn the K with a single finger. For 4 jaw we need entire hand plus a bit of force. 
Also, I'm sure that Joss was grinded to center. Maybe I'm mounted wrong, and also my chip plate isn't that precise, so I need to grind the Joss and show you how I do that, by the way. Clamping capacity with inner Joss is about 32 mm, and with outer Joss about 70 mm. I got some idea to make some extensions which screw into soft jaws and can clamp up to 125 mm, but that's another project. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe if you like, and see you next time.